Hello everyone, I'm super excited for this new book video on our channel. So today I'm going to talk about this series The Folk of Air written by Holly Black. An interesting thing is that at first I wasn't really sure about this series, I wasn't fully convinced because a lot of things that were said about this book actually weren't there. But I'm so glad that I gave it a chance and kept going because it became one of my favorite series so far this year, 2024. And also it's one of my favorite book in terms of the romance plot, Enemies to Lovers. I think it's the best Enemies to Lovers that I have read so far. So I'll talk a bit more about the plot and my overall thoughts if I recommend this series or not. So let's get started with the video. In terms of its genre, it's a fantasy book and the main plot is schemes, political intrigues in the fake court, royal court. And in terms of tropes, we find slow burn, enemies to lovers, uh, schemes and political intrigues, magical fake world. That's pretty much it in terms of the tropes. In terms of plot, we're following the journey of a mortal girl called Jewel Dart. So she's been taken away to the magical fae world by Madoc, who is a high fae general. After he murdered her parents, and so not only he took her, but he also took her twin sister and older sister to this magical fae world. And so we're following Ju's journey to power. Basically, she's trying to find a place in this fae world, but doesn't like mortal and doesn't respect them at all. So that's why you have the schemes and political intrigues, because essentially she is trying to kind of like break the rules and break the power system you have in place in that fake world. And now I'm going to my first impressions and why I had a hard time connecting with this series at first. So the way the book is kind of marketed on social media is that it's romantic and that romance is amazing and blah, blah, blah. So yes, indeed, the romance is amazing but we get none of it in the first book, or like maybe one or two pages. Uh, the romance is more present in the second and third book, but essentially the romance part is a sub subplot. So when I heard that this book is like a romantic, I can envision it to be similar to Caraval or Once Upon a Broken Heart, where essentially the whole plot is the romance part. It is just like set up in a fantasy world. That's why romantic is. It's heavily based on romance and all the magical stuff is a setup. It's the setting. And so that's how I approached this book. And I realized that not only it wasn't romantic, but also it wasn't the typical fantasy that you think of. You didn't have um, quests, prophecies, or adventure. No, it's only political intrigues. And it's something that I wasn't really ready for it, not that I dislike that genre, but it's not something I was expecting. Like, these books almost feel like it's a mystery or thriller rather than a fantasy, typical fantasy book. So that's why it kind of threw me off because what people were saying wasn't in the book. And so I needed time to readjust the way I was approaching this book. So I did take a step back. And I realized that, wait, if I don't compare it to other romantic books, if I just see it for what it is, it's an excellent book. The schemes were interesting, the political intrigues were interesting. And so that's why I kept going. Another thing why I was a bit skeptical about this book at first is because Ju, who is the main character of the book, is really morally great. She took some decisions where I had a hard time agreeing with them or sometimes the vision she had about certain things were just not morally right and it's something that you don't see often usually if you have a morally great character it's the male interest and usually you don't see the book from his perspective and so here it was different the main lead the female lead was morally great so you had to kind of like readjust your way of thinking to better understand the main character. And so again, like when I took a step back, not only I understood the book better, not only I connected with the genre better, but also with the female lead. And I just realized that, okay, like she's not the typical romantic, 
uh, fierce character. No, she's like cunning. She is smart and she would do anything to get power, which is again, not something that you often see in female leads. So after realizing that, I start appreciating the book way more. So one of my advices would be to approach this book, not with the perspective of things you have heard about it, but approach it neutrally or with the point of view that this is going to be full-on political intrigues and pretty much no romance. However, if we're talking about romance, it is a bit more present, as I mentioned in the second and third book. And it's so good. Any small moments you get are top quality. It's not the tacky romance that sometimes you see in books. No, it's just amazing. And if you're on Fable, which is an app that's kind of a mix of Instagram with um, Goodreads, you will see that people always quote this romance part. It's always on Fable because it's so good that people want to show it to others. So it kind of shows how good it is when everyone is just really reading the same romance part because the quality is amazing and honestly it was so well written and delivered but it's one of the reasons why i think it's the best enemies to lovers and romance build up i have read so far this year so this series has three main books and one novella hello guys so this is vicky from the editing basically i'm here to correct something i've said in the video there are basically three main books and two novellas, novella 1.5 and novella 3.5. The reason why I didn't mention the 3.5 novella is because the story is set up way before the main saga and way after, so it doesn't really reflect on the main series, so I thought it would be just irrelevant to mention it here, whereas the novella 1.5 some actions and decisions that Taryn, so Jude's twin sister, did do reflect directly on the story. Essentially, you can see it in book three. So that's why I mentioned it and didn't mention the other novella. But if you guys like the series or are interested in reading more novellas, I do highly recommend reading the 3.5. But just know that it's not that highly connected to the main series i would say it's about garden's life before way before he met jude and basically who he is so if you can kind of interested into reading garden's perspective i would highly recommend it but it's definitely not a requirement to fully enjoy the saga so that's basically what i wanted to say which is 1.5 and you guys, I highly recommend reading the novella. It's about Terrence from Terrence's perspective. She is the twin sister of Jude. Highly recommend reading it because it will make so much sense to what Terrence did in book three. It will give more depth and just more meaning to her actions and decisions. And an interesting thing, again, is that a lot of people approached the novella as Taryn writing an apology to Jude and they ended up being disappointed because they were like, oh, this wasn't really an apology, I still don't like Taryn, I think she didn't really properly apologize. And it's true because it wasn't really an apology, it was Taryn showing to Jude who she truly is because they do drift apart because of certain decision. But the novella really shows how similar the twins are. It's just that they took different ways to approach the same goal, which is find a place in the Feyland. And the thing is that they took different approaches because they have different strengths and weaknesses. And I think it showed beautifully how you can achieve that goal that they want, like that place in the Feyland, but differently. And if I were to compare them to their adoptive parents, I would say that Jude is really similar to Maddox. She's really ruthless and would do anything for, for power. And Taryn is really similar to Oriana. Like she tries to portray herself as a lady, but she is really cunning. And so I highly recommend reading the novella because 
you'll just understand things differently and see it from a different perspective and it will give so much more depth to book three so please read it in terms of the writing style and world building and stuff i think it was built really progressively uh book one if i were to compare it is like putting puzzles pieces of puzzles together so it may feel for some a bit slow because you don't see the full picture yet and how book one ends is that you can just take a step back and you see the full picture and you get so excited because it's like you're finally getting where this whole scheming and plotting was going it feels like you're finally learn the rules to a game and you can play and so book two is all about that play spirit you're finally into juice schemes you understand how her brain works you understand how she sees the world and it gets so exciting book three is amazing and book two ends on such a cliffhanger but you want to immediately read book three that's why i did i didn't stop reading i immediately finished the series and it didn't disappoint, it was amazing. So now for my final thoughts, I highly, highly recommend reading this series. If you're into fae, kind of similar to Emily Wells' Encyclopedia of Fairies, you know, this type of fae, but powerful, almost to the point of being scary, you'll love it. The setup of the world is beautiful and the writing style was amazing. Um, I think that if you're into like schemes and plots, that's definitely a book you'll like. However, it's an advice that I'll repeat once again. Don't approach it as a romantic. You don't do like me and many others because I'm on Fable and Goodreads and I've seen so many people being like, oh, I don't know if I should continue this series or not. That's not what I expected. You don't have a lot of romance. It's all about schemes. I don't know if I like it. And every single time I kept telling people, keep going because it gets better and you finally see the bigger picture. You see the full puzzle completed in book two and you'll get so excited once you understand the stakes and everything and so many people kept going and they ended up loving it so if you're going for a rough path with book one i still recommend reading book two because book two is so good so that's my biggest advice and biggest recommendation in terms of rating i gave the first book 3.5 stars out of five just because as i said i didn't go with the right mindset I had a hard time to connect with Jude because she's a really morally great character. But once I got used to her, once I got used to the genre and kind of like dropped all the expectations that I had, I enjoyed the series so much. I gave the novella five stars. I gave the second book five stars. I gave, I gave the third book five stars. So it shows how much I love this series. And I think that is one of the series that I would definitely love to reread, which doesn't happen often. I don't really like to reread books, but I think that I would love to reread the first book with the right mindset this time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read this series. Uh, if like me, you were surprised by the lack of romance in book one. So just let me know what you think of it and let's chat in the comments and see you soon in another video. Bye guys. Thank you.